Today's Wednesday, January 11, 2017. You're tuned into the Elevator Radio Show. Hey, everybody, got a good show for you today, so stay tuned. Here it comes. You're tuned into the Elevator Radio Show, a weekly program dedicated to covering news and information on elevators, escalators, and moving walkways. Produced in the wee hours of the morning, a new show is uploaded every Wednesday, sometimes even before you get out of bed. Listen to some of the comments sent in from our audience. Rob from New York writes, Tom, are you f***ing insane? You actually get up at 2 a.m. each Wednesday to put this show out? Man, you must love elevators. Tim from Illinois writes, I'm not sure why I listen, but ever since I tuned into the first show back in 2007, I've been addicted. Matt in Texas writes, I like your safety messages, Tom. It's important to remember them each and every day. And he also adds, When am I going to win the monthly prize pack giveaway? Ron from California sent this in. Despite your inability to pronounce words in the English language, I tune in each week and am glad that you offer this service to the industry. It's better than Google News Alerts. Sarah from Washington writes, Love the show, Tom, and look forward to it each week. I'm glad I signed up for the newsletter. You provide a valuable resource for the industry, not only for North America, but worldwide. Enjoy the show. And now, here's your sleep-deprived host, Tom Seibert. Everybody, it's good to be here. Yes, it is. Another Wednesday, another show, another day that we're not pushing up daisies. Yes. And so take full advantage of that day that you do not push up daisies because that could all change in a heartbeat. And uh, obviously we don't want that to happen. But if it does, make sure that your life is uh, is one that you're proud that you lived and that you contributed and you did your best to do the best uh, you could with your family and your industry, whatever you do. Just make sure that your time spent on this earth is... Uh, is one that is uh, is productive and makes a difference. All right, enough of my pep talk there. I hope everybody's doing great out there. It has been kind of a crazy week when it comes to weather. We've had some, man, California just keeps getting dumped on by rain. We got, obviously have quite a few listeners in California listening to the program. And northern the northern part, oh my goodness, it's literally, you look at the rain and there's like no rain in the ocean that I can see in terms of the weather app radar thingy. And then it just keeps coming and coming and coming like out of, out of, uh, out of, thin air it's crazy but yeah nuts just totally nuts so hopefully uh that calms down soon and uh we are expected to have some uh some snow i think next week in the midwest crazy wind yesterday it was actually kind of warm and it's sad when you think that 37 degrees is actually warm because it felt like a heat wave drove home with my windows down and i loved it it was great uh, but I know that for some of you who are in the uh, lower areas of the country, uh, some of the colder temperatures like 29 in, in uh, parts of Alabama, Florida, it's pretty darn cold. So I get I get that. Um, but in, in here in Chicago, that is actually considered warm and a heat wave. So um, good to be here. 2017 has kicked off with a pretty significant just push as it should. And hopefully your day's are, are productive and they're busy and you have a list of goals you want to accomplish for 2017. I think it's going to be a great year. Um, and that's really the only way you can look at it. Because if you <laughs> if you look at it as being a, uh, you know, one that might be crappy, man, that's the only way it's going to be. It's really going to be the only, you know, here's my motive. I feel like a motivational speaker this morning, right? Right. Anyway, um, so make the most of the time that you have as you walk around on this, uh, this, this ball that we like to call Earth, okay? Um, okay, we'll get right into the news and um, encourage your feedback over on the Facebook page. And I don't know what the link is, so go over if you're a Facebook person. That seems to be where most of, uh, most of the responses and the content and whatnot you know, kind of tie back into uh, the website here. Also, you can go to elevatorradioshow.com where all the archi- archive shows are there. Um, some of them, actually some of the older ones may not be because when we switched our, uh, our hosting with our our, uh, our show files, some of them did not get swapped over, but a lot of them are old. Unfortunately, a lot of the old links in the old shows do not work either. So um, anyway, that's that's about it. So anyway, we'll get up into the news, up into the news. Does that, that seems like I'm fighting the news or I'm doing something very violently or wrong with the news. But I'm going to go get up into the news. And I know that's not proper English. Uh, next, and we'll have you out of here in no time. Let this week's news stories give you a lift on what's happening in the vertical transportation arena. Each news segment is organically dug and fresh with news stories of the week. Got lift? 
If not, stay tuned. First news article of the show. This is my rant of the day. Don't really understand it. Crane's New York Business reporting that a law is proposed to correct city's construction death count. Assemblywoman Linda Rosenthal's bill would count every fatality. Now, understand this completely because what apparently is happening is when there's a construction fatality, uh, the the city of New York, I believe, does not count it unless there's a a clear violation of, uh, of, I believe, the building or city code. So um, whereas OSHA will come in, they count every death. So Unfortunately, I, I agree with uh, Assemblywoman Linda Rosenthal's uh, bill and 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 you know in her wanting to make sure City and OSHA are, are both on the same page. Uh, but the reality is, it's not going to change. I don't believe it's going to change uh, the number of fatalities until other steps are taken. Um, you know, sharing information on what could be prevented or what could be changed or, uh, you know, to avoid those kind of accidents, I think is huge. I think OSHA needs to take a bigger part in, in ensuring that that happens. Uh, and most importantly, and this does not happen, have anything to do with uh, elevator constructors. Well, it does, but it doesn't have anything to do with uh, construction death count. Uh, but if you want to spend some time in making a difference, consider sponsoring or seeing what happened to Senate uh, 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 New York's S Bill uh, 194, which uh, was kind of out there and supposed to be a working uh, or, or something that would be completed as of 2015-2016. Uh, it's currently in the Senate committee, and I don't know where the hell it's at. So I don't know if this is a bill that goes to die, but this bill was, uh, in addition to many other safety uh, measures uh, requires the licensing of persons engaged in the design, construction, operation, inspection, maintenance, alteration, repair of elevators. So, again, I don't, what happened to that? Anybody in New York, can you share with me what happened with this? Where'd it go? Because you click on the link or you look it up, it's like error, not found. So, um, am I missing something? If this has been passed, let me know and just so I can, you know, you can call me an idiot or, uh, but I did not see anything in 2015 or end of 2016 that shows that this bill uh, had actually passed or where it's at. There's two little balls underneath it in the progress bar, but there's two more that go after it. So I don't know what they're what they're waiting for or what the issue is. But yeah, you want to you want to take some um, some serious safety steps. You know, and take a look at who is uh, uh, not just inspectors that 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 you know need to be um, certified, which I believe in the state they are they they are required to be, but in terms of uh, those that work on the equipment. I mean, honestly, just think about it. If 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 you require a you know hot dog license vendor or hot dog vendor to, to get a license, uh, how how would you not you know require um, people that work on elevators be trained and and um, know what they're doing? So, um, and and I'm not I'm really not a true believer that the number of inspections or or better inspections and and better enforcement would necessarily make uh, a better mechanic or technician. I think training through, you know, yearly programs and, and education. I think those two elements are huge when it comes to any kind of any kind of uh, trade. And I'm all for it. I think um, I don't think people on their in their spare time are gonna do that if it's not required of them. I don't think that um, it's right that somebody who's putting sing- shingles on your on the side of your house or siding. Um, can also fix your elevator. So what happened to this bill? But you know, and and, I, and I'm not I'm not opposed to the, the city of New York uh, or the state or whoever this bill would fall under. Not S Bill one nine four five, but the one that Linda, uh, the assemblywoman, wants to to push forth and just to ensure that all construction fatalities are um, are kept track of. I. I I don't know why. I mean, I th- it's a good idea, but in all reality, how is that going to make um, how is that going to make anybody on a construction site safer? Um, so, yeah. Some, sometimes I, I know the I, I totally get the uh, why. I just um, I just think efforts could be spent doing other other things. That's that's just my uh, my side sidestep there. But yeah. Anybody know what happened to S Bill 1945?
Is that still in the Senate? Is it still being uh, mulled over? Is pork being added to it? What's going on with it? Anybody know from New York you could share with me? Because I like to get kind of an inside uh, note on that. I'd love to uh, get a better understanding. Because at one point I thought it had passed, but I, <laughs> it does not show that it that it had. So, And I could be wrong. I've been wrong many times before. So let me know. Thank you. Okay, Elevator U has launched or announced that they are requesting a call for papers. If anybody is interested, any company, corporation out there, please fill out the form that's attached in the link or go to elevatoru.org. It's the latest blog post over there and uh, uh, consider uh, becoming a presenter. And uh, just as a note, all the presentations that are provided at Elevator U are non commercial base there uh, to suit educational purposes only. So uh, just keep that in mind as you consider, uh, you know, what you might present on. I think there have been some great topics, but ultimately they're not intended to be sales uh, pitches at all. That's what the vendor commercials are for. So, uh, okay. So click on the link. You probably already got an email on that as well. Man, I'm like having a problem getting around the website this morning. I just... I do not know why. Oh, here we go. Okay, I just got scrolled on. There we go. Okay, hot pursuit for the fastest elevator. Interesting article by the Washington Post. Um, Adam Taylor wrote, I'll get close this one. Anyway, talking about, um, you know, elevator rides not being normally worth documenting, but when you step in the uh, into the elevator at the Shanghai Tower, people often pull out their cameras. As the door closes, screen on the elevator's front lights up to show you the car's location as it rises towards the building's newly opened observation deck. The neatly dressed attendant informs passengers that the elevator has now reached top speed of 18 meters per second, approximately 40 miles per hour, which is pretty fast. Um, the fastest elevator in the world, according to the Guinness Book of World Records. Um, but the reality is, is that um, the official fastest time was actually 45.8 miles per hour. And uh, that's not something that runs automatically, but yet it was one that a uh, was done when a Mitsubishi elevator technician got in and flicked the switch, making the speedometer on the screen turn red, uh, which is 20.5 meters per second. Can you imagine creating an elevator that goes so fast <laughs> that literally it might kill you? I mean, I'm not saying this for general riding public because I don't want to kill anybody at all. I don't want to hurt anybody. But the reality is if you want to do... A, you know, I wonder what qualifications Guinness World Records has for the fastest elevator in the world. What if you made it made go like Mach 1? You know, you'd be splattered all over the inside of the, out of, of the cab because the reality is you couldn't stop it quick enough. Um, but I, can you imagine? I mean, <laughs> just, I mean, taking, taking, uh, you know, that, that spot as the world's fastest elevators, I think would just be terrible. I mean, it'd be, I don't know. I, 45.8 is fast. Don't get me wrong, but you wonder if somebody just blows out of the water just just for giggles, you know, where you're tied into some like jetpack and, you know, there's probably qualifications that would say, okay, well, what qualifies as technically an elevator? Um, but yeah, it's, it's cool to see elevators in the uh, Washington Post written like this. So, um, and obviously there are lots of different projects, different things that are uh, the majors are, are kind of searching to do and uh, become different and I, I commend all of them for for their pursuit in that whether it be the fastest elevator whether it be elevators to go sideways whether it be uh virtual reality or nanotube technology with cables i mean all sorts of stuff like that it's cool to see see that kind of innovation here in the united states not just happening in asia and europe so pretty cool Next news article, Chicago Elevator Associate January recap has been posted online. CEA, thanks to Maytot for presenting. Uh, next meeting will be in February, and that's uh, crazy to think it's right around the corner, but it kind of is, even though it's only January 11th. Uh, but it's amazing how quickly it the month feels like it's going, but maybe that's just because it's been a, a busy week. So put that on your calendar. You can RSVP online as well. Next news article, more issues than just elevators. This is one of those articles where you just, you know, you got to kind of read between the lines. The the low, wait, the lowdownnewyork.com has an article talking about the one year after deadly accident and elevators once again malfunction at Grand Street Complex. Now, you know what? It's, it's, it's terrible, honestly. This is Section 8 housing, which I have a feeling is not going to receive the same kind of quality um, contract for maintenance. 
I'm sure funding is probably a major issue when it comes to maintenance of the building. And uh, not only, you know, the issue with the elevators um, brought to light, which in one case, I think it's, it's, it's positive that, you know, as you read further down in the article, the elevators were actually fixed. Um, you know, as, as the updates had stated, the reality is the city of New York sent, D, sent DOB inspectors out to make sure that everything was safe and that's the proper thing to do as well. But they also had issues with gut, uh, get the gas lines, gas being shut off. And funding is definitely, you know, obviously uh, um, not always there for uh, low income housing or Section 8 or federally assisted uh, housing, stuff like that. So uh, just one of those deals where it's not it's not the whole story. Uh, when it comes to, um, you know, why elevators are not working or why they're shut down. And, and nine times out of ten, we don't learn that information because, you know, the elevator contractor does not want to hang their uh, their customer out to dry, whether it be a funding issue or whether it be uh, an issue that uh, is related to the equipment that uh, cannot be, you know, uh, fixed or if it's a payment issue, whatever. You know what I mean? So you don't hear about that, but yet you got some, uh, some screaming blogger talking about, uh, you know, Elevators being a service. So, again, more issues than just elevators uh, in, in low income or lower income type housing. Okay, Bart Delay's vote on escalator replacement and repair. San Francisco Examiner has an article uh, about this. What I thought was very interesting was, um, eh, and I don't know what it was, but it says here, as quoted, uh, besides, uh, let's see here. Yeah, okay, so it's going to go out. Oh, yeah, there you go. A little bit of. Fast and Furious music. Uh, there was an error on the uh, bid document that had they awarded it, uh, they would have cost them even more money. But to give you an idea of how much money costs to uh, replace elevators, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. More money than I'll ever see in my lifetime, that's for sure. Um, yeah, let's see here. The only other item I thought was interesting in this article, but uh, it's uh, it, stated, it states in the article when Bart polled contractors, it found that given... Wait, I'm not moving anything. Given the current business activity in the Bay Area resulting in a shortage of certified conveyance mechanics, the limited number of escalator manufacturers and the risk to the manufacturer of replacing an unseen escalator, staff has determined that the bid is fair and reasonable <laughs> at the low, low cost of $27 million with an option of $67.9 million, which ends up being $16 million over BART engineers' estimates um, on contract costs. It's big numbers there. I think that's for the replacement or modernization of I so many. I'm not going to scroll back up there because you're going to listen to Fast and Furious music again. So um, anyway, yeah. So <coughs> interesting. That's good that they didn't uh, put that out to bid. At least they're being honest. Whatever that. Um, Got to keep pulling up this goofy elevator <laughs> image. If you're listening to the podcast, you don't have to be so you're not subjected to this, this neon photo from last week's uh, show. So, OK, next news article, Golden, Golden Globe, seven best elevator Instagrams. Apparently not a very exciting uh, Golden Globe awards ceremony because there's a whole seven elevator Instagrams in there. And again, <laughs> I'm not even sure what the Golden Globes is for, but uh, if you are a, uh, you know, TV watcher, that's probably what it what it has to do with. So, um, yeah, slow news day when you've got, you know, elevator photos as their topic. Okay, elevator media coaster. I saw this this, this this news term popped up in my aggregator. Not quite sure what this is, uh, but it's a news um, press release from Blue Loop Networking and Attractions Business. The attractions business talking about Holovis and SNS Sansia Technologies reveal patent immersed elevator media coaster. Okay, so the image you're looking at, or if you're if you're listening to the podcast, you can't see it obviously, but it, it's basically a roller coaster thing where you've got, um, I don't know, it looks like a wooden cart that holds about one, two, three. There's three rows of four. Um, I'm not quite sure exactly how this is necessarily an elevator, but um, it, it's one of those kind of, you know, Disney World types of, of rides. And it looks like it's probably very, very expensive for creators to come up with. So anyway, I wish there were more photos. I, I'm a photo person. <laughs> so I would like to see more photos of what this thing is. But they're not there. Oh, well. All right. Next news article. 
I'm not a big amusement park ride guy either. You know, I used to used to like uh, you know going to Great America and whatnot, and like like the Tower of Terror ride, and that was gone unfortunately. But always like that. Um, but not not huge on the roller coasters anymore. I I think I'm getting just too old. Uh, okay, I'm on the wrong show. Here we go. Okay, next news article: Federal money allocated for CTA. Um, it's amazing how much money there is on the federal side. Obama spends or sends CTA $1.1 billion for the red line improvements. It will include elevators, uh, uh, overpass. So if money is allocated for that, I'm all for it. Uh, and if it's needed, I'm all for it. That's a lot of money. That's $1.1 billion. Billion with a B. A lot of money. Um, Watch the president's uh, farewell address last night. I think it was it was good. Um you know, I think um, he had a lot of good things to say, and, and hopefully we as a nation can can move forward and we as a nation can make our country better because the reality is that one person cannot do that. One president cannot do that. So it's up to us to keep our politicians in line and to, uh, to ensure that, uh, you know, we're making the country the best that it possibly can be. Okay, in, in Australia, man falls three stories down elevator shaft in Homebush. Uh, he was seriously injured. He was not killed. Thank goodness. I cannot believe he was not killed. Uh, he's just lucky. And uh, there's not any information. Oh, okay. It was a builder at an apartment complex which was under construction. You think they have licensing in Australia? I wonder. I wonder. I know that. I you know what? I know that there are some countries. I think uh, either Ireland or UK. And don't quote me on this. That their lift. Uh, their mechanics and technicians are thought of, I mean, like they're on the same level as like a, a build, building maintenance person. And that's like, that's kind of crazy. I mean, I know as, as, a, as a, ba- a building maintenance manager, you have to kind of know everything, but you shouldn't be working on stuff you have no idea what you're doing. So, uh, and I think the pay scale is probably around the same level as that as well. But yeah, I mean, the United States is definitely the place to be. Um, an elevator mechanic, a technician, and um, it's one of the strongest unions that, I, that I'm aware of. So, uh, Next news article, very next day, air shipping with the elevator repair. Okay, here we go. Again, another one of those articles where it's, it's not everything you think it is, and uh, apparently broken elevator causes a major problem in Yakima, Washington. 57-year-old Steve Jackman had been stuck in his apartment for over a week. The reason, because he's incapable of walking up and down five floors of stairs. And he states, it's ridiculous in this day and age when we have a package here from Australia overnight. Why can't we have the part here to fix an elevator that has trapped over 50 people in the building? Well, probably there's more to this story than you may have realized. It could be an old elevator. could be a whole bunch of things. And the reality is, is that we're not flying a package from Australia in a, you know, uh, a prop plane overnight to get it here and if you're living in a building that's from like the 1930s and the elevators from the 1930s good chance you're going to have issues with it so uh it's kind of a rational statements are kind of a pain in the came in the butt to, to read and it kind of bother me reality is there's always more to the story than what you read and uh, and I've, that's one of the lessons i've learned and when you read something online doesn't mean it's automatically correct that's my disclaimer for the day as well anything you hear on the show anything any comments you hear are solely mine do not re- represent anybody and i could be wrong more often than not all right that's my disclaimer don't don't subpoena me do not depose me i do not know anything and i will tell you that if you're an attorney for any reason i'm not an expert of any kind <laughs> all right next is our goal and i will quote myself as that what am I an expert on? I'm not an expert at anything, really. Yeah. I wouldn't depose myself for, <laughs> for anything. All right. Um, and I have been deposed. All right. Here we go. No malfunction in escalator accident in Singapore. We talked about this article. I covered it last, last month. Straight times. Um, there was no malfunction found to be on the escalator, and it appears that it was rider behavior when one uh, commuter lost its balance and then fell, knocking three more over like dominoes pretty much. So... I think that information should be shared as well. How often do you learn a story, learn about a story, and then literally do not hear anything more about it after that? You know, you don't hear, okay, well, they're okay, or they're, you know, there was an issue or whatever. You just don't hear anything. Attorneys just grab it and go uh, go from there. 
Um, New Year's baby arrives uh, for elevator mechanic. I always like these stories, but what makes it even cooler is the fact that it involves an elevator mechanic from Auto Canada. Uh, Almonte General Hospital's New Year's baby arrives early for the Dunrobin family. And um, Almonte General Hospital's first baby of 2017 is a little girl. Uh, little Cecilia Cooney achieved the inevitable title by arriving 11 days early on January 3rd. At 9:24, she weighs, she weighed seven pounds and 11 ounces and measured 20 inches in length. So it must be a small school. I mean, a small town. If there were three days after New Year's, New Year's to <coughs> excuse me to, uh, to have the first baby in the area or at the hospital, I guess. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Well, congratulations. Either way, congratulations. Um, yeah, pretty cool. Very cool. Cute family. So neat to see her see elevator people in the news like that and in a positive light. So exciting. Life is awesome. New life is awesome. Babies are awesome, even when they don't sleep. Next news article in Quincy, Illinois. Apparently a man fall was injured after falling down an elevator shaft in downtown Quincy. This is a building that was taken over by the local government. Um, and I believe it was a man who was perhaps the old owner or working for the old owner to clear it out uh, when he fell down. Uh, apparently he's okay. Um, there's really not a whole lot to cover here. Yeah, it's a cheap building. But they're going to demo it because it's got asbestos issues. He asbestos. Speaking of which, my, my lesson for all of you out there... For the day, safety message is if you wear a sweatshirt, I know you see me wearing a sweatshirt on the show quite often. If you wear a sweatshirt, make sure that if it has ties, cut them off. Cut them off on every single sweatshirt you have. And I'm talking about the ones that go through the hoodie. Cut them off. 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 Had a friend, not a friend, but a, a friend's brother uh, who's a plumber got his, his sweatshirt, his, you know, dangling hoodie rope thingy to close up his hood caught in a in an auger in a plumbing auger and it strangled him to death so please if there's a safety message out there please if you wear a sweatshirt that has a strings hang hanging there as with any kind of outfit that has dangling stuff and you work around anything that moves don't wear it cut it off don't wear it no ties no chains, no anything. And, and you probably already know that, but we just don't, we just take it for granted. So uh, make sure that's my safety message for the day and uh, post it up somewhere. I do it at, at work all the time because we've got drills, we've got all sorts of stuff. And the last thing you need is, is to be, uh, you know, strangled by your own sweatshirt because it's awful. You do not want to leave, you do not want to leave your family like that because they will never, they will never forget it. So. And last news article of the show, dog bites owners after getting trapped in escalator. Poor puppy. I was watching the news coverage of the terrible tragedy that occurred in uh, at the airport in um, oh, Fort Lauderdale with the shooting. They showed SWAT team guys with their dogs on the escalators. And I realized that in the... Oh, maybe it was Chicago. It might have been the, C the Chicago Hair Airport. I'm not quite sure where it was, but I understand that the reality and you know of what happened and how tragic that is. It's awful. It's terrible. I'm not sure what our world has come to when we have crazy people like that going to some air airport just shooting up people that are they don't have no idea who they are. You know what I mean? It's just awful. And I, that's a whole other issue, another rant for another day. But um, but. The side note here, and I know it's much less of an issue. I know it's much less of a concern on the, uh, you know, on any kind of level. I get that. I totally get that. But if you see anybody with a dog in an escalator, just let them know that is not the, the wisest thing they should be doing. They should not be on there. Little dogs' paws and fingers and toes can easily get caught in the comb teeth in between the steps, and that's... Nobody, most dog owners don't even realize that. So just share that, share that message, please. Not that there's too many opportunities to put a dog on an escalator. Uh, just, just scary. So that's my, um, that's my other safety tip for the show. And that's going to do it for the show, everybody. Yeah, well, 
good content on the program. I encourage you to uh, share that, to post any comments, any thoughts, any whatever on uh, our Facebook page. And as always, thanks for tuning in today. Um, greatly appreciate it. Stay warm, stay dry, stay safe. And we will talk to you next Wednesday. Bye-bye.